remove that dorsal fat and the other innards, entrails, that's the correct word to use, and the swim bladder, and whatever is left in the belly of the fish. Now, if we go to fillet in this fish, it isn't necessary to do that. However, I like to, to have all the entrails gone so that it's a much easier job to see the bones and the vertebrae as we tear this fish apart and make it into a boneless fillet. One of the other things that can be done to get it ready to be boneless is I like to take these little uh, pelvic fins right here and they have bones that go in, they have bones that are inside the flesh here. And if you put your finger around it like this, you can just remove them. You can pull them off with the skinning plier. That's a mighty handy tool. So far we've skinned the fish with it, we've cut the uh, spines off, we've gutted with it, and now we're removing the pelvic fins. And now that leaves us boneless in that section of the fish. So what we have is a fish that you might find in the restaurant prepared as whole dressed fish. Uh, you know, light uh, batter and breading, this fish can be fried uh, just, as, just as it is. And uh, to take it a little further, we're going to have to fillet it and we'll do that a little later. Now Michael's going to show us how to use his method, which is the method of the nail on the board. John showed us how to hold the fish in one hand and skin it. Many people do it that way. Other people feel like they're, they're not strong enough to hold the fish or that they need something to really impale the fish on. That's what this is for. Many people use some sort of board that has a spike in it. This is just a nail that you can impale the fish on and then the fish is steady and you can skin around that. It's not the only way to do it. Many times people use hooks. May hang a hook on a board like this. Hang the board on the wall or nail it to a tree. The endless variation, but the thing, whole point is to make the fish steady so that you can work on it without uh, without having to just hold on to it with your hand. So we take our catfish, we have to be careful with a sharp nail like that to make sure that, he's, uh, that you don't put your hand in. A lot of people like to tilt these boards. They'll have them up against the wall or someplace where they're tilted in an angle like that that they can skin from. Of course, we're not going to be able to do that and, and really demonstrate it. Again, like John did, we're going to go in here and uh, cut the skin so that we can get a hold of it with the, the uh, skinning pliers. And also, like John did, one of the first things I'm going to do is take off this dorsal fin so that I don't have a chance of running that spine through my hand later. Finally, you may notice I have a little different glove than John did. I tend to like to use a rubberized glove. I think that uh, I don't catch on the spines then like I do on a cotton glove, and that always irritates me when I'm hung up on the spine. So I use, tend to use a rubberized glove. This is my favorite, although many times I've used the little cotton uh, gardening gloves that have the little rubble, rubber dipples in them. Anyway, again like John did, once you get that fish impaled, you simply hold it, start taking the skin off down both sides. John told you it'll naturally want to go in, in segments. You'll eventually usually catch enough of it that you can just peel the whole thing off almost total. and you'll still have the belly flap, so we pull him off now, turn him upside down, dorsal spine's no longer in a way, grab a hold of that belly flap and pull that forward. And we have a skin fish, but we haven't had to hold him in our hand the whole time. At this point, we can remove the board out of our way and we'll just go back over the same thing John did, and that's to head and gut the fish going to make slices in up here, get as close, as much meat out of that as you can. Cut in a little bit and then simply twist and pull the head off. Some of the entrails will come out, turn the fish around, put the knife in the vent, cut up through and then with the skinning pliers you can go in here and remove the rest of the entrails without any difficulty at all. Then this fish is a, again a whole dressed fish ready to uh, to wash and then batter and uh, and fry or bake or whatever you want to do. I will remove the pectoral fins, that's something I usually do. Some people like to go ahead and remove this fin. A lot of times you can do that by just grabbing it and pulling it off. Sometimes you have to make little cuts around it. But in most cases, again with the skinning pliers, you can just totally remove that whole fin if you don't like the appearance of it. Most times the tail of the catfish is fried with the catfish and is, is eaten. It's considered a, 
an edible part. In fact, it's one of my favorite parts. Michael and I have shown you a couple ways to skin a catfish in preparation for filleting it. That's my preference, and I think that's Michael's preference, that we take off the skin first before we fillet the fish. People always ask the question, though, is why can't I do like I do with my bass or my bluegill? Why can't I just take the fillet off and take the skin off by removing the, fillet, by removing the skin from the fillet with the knife? It can be done. I don't like it because it makes the fillet look a little bit rougher and it maybe is a little bit slippery to hold the fish this way. But it can be done, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Of course, we have another channel catfish here, just like we used for uh, the uh, process of taking the skin off and filleting the fish. This fish also has the spines on the side and the spines on the top. But since we're not skinning the fish, I'm not even going to worry about cutting those spines off. What we do, and I like to do, is to remove the head of the fish before we start the process. That's also a preference. If you're working with an electric knife, or you're interested, or you're interested in being more uh, efficient or faster at skinning the fish or processing the fish, you can go in and cut the uh, head off, cut, uh, leave the head on, and cut the fillet off of the frame without removing the head. But I like to remove the head; it gets that mess out of the way and probably gives you a little bit of better dress-out percentage. The uh, the bone bony structure that we have to cut under is right here. It's a little more invisible when we don't have the skin off the fish, but there's a little bone right there, and we cut behind it. We're going to remove the head. And remember, all we have to do is to uh, cut into the skin so that the skin isn't attached when we break the head away from the body. And so I'm just cutting around. And of course, when we get up here in the area of the, of the jaws, we cut underneath here like this to get a good amount of the flesh that's found under, behind the uh, jaws of the fish. And we make sure we cut all the way through to the bony structure up here on the top part of the fish. So we've gotten to the point where the skin is cut at the top, all of the flesh is cut here, and all that's attached to the head then from the frame is the backbone. We do just like we did with the fish before. We twist and we remove, remove the uh, head, and some of the entrails come with the uh, fish, with the fish's head. So we're back to the same thing that we had before, a, a, a body with the skin on. At this time, it's real difficult to take the skin off, so you're really going to have to take uh, and remove the fillet and then remove the skin from the fillet. I also like to gut the fish at this point. That's a preference. It isn't absolutely necessary, but for uh, making this a little cleaner so that we can see what we're doing, we're going to remove the entrails from the fish so that it just is more visible as we're, as we're uh, uh, showing you how to process the fish at home. We've got a lot of fat in this fish. He's obviously been well fed. These are farm-raised catfish. Of course, uh, fish from our lakes and reservoirs can be done exactly in the same way. And they usually don't have as much fat, though, as the fish that may be farm-raised. Fat doesn't hurt anything. Most of the flesh in a catfish is in the, uh, is in the entrails in the body uh, cavity. The flesh in the meat is very low, usually less than 8%, which makes it a meat of high quality, low fat. Now, we've got the fish with the skin on, and we've got these fins still attached here. Eventually, we'll probably cut those off so that we can make an easier fillet. These bones right here are the rib bones, if you remember, and we're going to remove them from the backbone. And so we have several ribs up front here near the head part of the fish that are the thickest ribs. They're a little tough to cut, and we could go backwards like this with a heavier knife and cut those, but this is about a pound and a quarter fish. Usually, if you just lay the fish down like this, we can start the cut here at the... Uh, at the top of the fish and break those first couple bones with a little pressure. But remember, <laughs> use the cotton glove if you can because this is a very slippery fish. The cotton grips. I like to remove my fingers from the body cavity, lift up this flap like this, and get my hands out of the way because with a little slip of the knife, you can peel back the skin and, and really make a, uh, quite a mess of your hands. So this, is, uh, this fish here is a little bit more difficult, but we got it. So what we did is we removed these ribs up front from the backbone of the fish, and we're cutting along just as, just as we will with the, uh, the fillet on a fish that's skinned. What we're going to do then is just slide the knife along the backbone. And only with practice you're going to be able to feel that. You can see how nicely the backbone is exposed, the vertebrae right here. They're actually 
sliced right off the top. There's no meat left. That means we've been doing a good job of following the knife along the backbone. There's also